So thank you, Mike, for introducing me and for inviting me to give a presentation in spite of the fact that I'm a member of the ODVA board <laughs> in the meantime, but I worked for a long time for a Provibus organization. So I will keep my presentation very balanced because I think it's, uh, it's an Ethernet in process automation uh, presentation. Um, I will address first uh, very shortly who is Andreas Hauser, then reflect shortly 40 years Ethernet and ask the question why I'm invited to talk about such old stuff. Um, then Internet of Things is an aspect, and then I would like to ask the question, what does Ethernet and ice cream have in common? Maybe you know the answer. Um, I will talk about target industries, classical and future communication architecture, something that is missing for process industries today, and, and my conclusions. Okay. Um, for those who don't know, Andrews and Hauser, um, we are active as an instrumentation vendor uh, in the process automation industries. Um, we have a vision that our customers perceive Andrews and Hauser as an international automation solution supplier with a wide range of process measurement instrumentation and a strong presence worldwide. Um, this is a technical view. On the other hand, we develop our employees, we foster a responsible attitude towards community and environment while ensuring, of course, uh, business success and profit. Okay, uh, maybe you have seen um, last year there was a big uh, advertisement for the years of, of uh, Ethernet. It was a big milestone, of course. Um, here shortly, the, the very famous inventor Robert Metcalf, uh, and not the not so famous co-inventor David Box. So they worked at these times for for Xerox um, in the Silicon Valley, and they did basically the basic invention of what we know today as uh, as Ethernet. And again, the question is why I'm invited to talk about 40 years old stuff. Um, maybe we find a good answer for that. <coughs> Um, everything began, as you have seen, in uh, 1973. Uh, then you see also 1980, there was a, a first public specification of Ethernet, the so-called Blue Book. And uh, when I worked at these times in the early 80s for Siemens, I was very proud to have such a Blue Book with a signature of Robert Metcalf. Um, maybe it exists somewhere still uh, at Siemens. Um, in, uh, then Intel jumped in and brought the first chips um, to implement uh, Ethernet in a compact way. Um, then there was a, let's say, a big step in the technology. Uh, so far, um, uh, Ethernet used a coaxial cable, and then we came to the switch technologies with uh, uh, 100 mega, 10, 10 megabit first, 100 megabit. 1000 megabit, now we are at um, 10 gigabit in the meantime, and we also saw something new, which is power over Ethernet, and the story goes on and on. So you see, it's not really old stuff. It's uh, started 40 years ago, but the current technology is brand new, and it's uh, up to date. You see also the three companies that started these activities, the so-called Dix Group, uh, digital, Intel, and Xerox. Maybe the older among you know still the company Digital Equipment. It was a very in innovative company uh, these days. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned that already. I worked in these days for Siemens, and I'm very proud that I was uh, one of the. I was the project leader. We connected the first PLC in 1985 to Ethernet, so we were very early adopters of this technology. Again, it's not old stuff, it's brand new, and uh, also Ethernet had a lot of competitors, competitive, competitive technologies like Token Ring, Token Bus, uh, ArcNet, FDDI. Have you heard about in the last couple of years of these technologies? They all disappeared, more or less. They showed up and disappeared, but Ethernet is still alive. 
So I'm a big fan of, of Ethernet technology because it's really a good thing and we can, uh, our customers and we as vendors can also still today benefit from them. Now, um, there are some uh, new aspects that bring new um, life in, in, the, in the Ethernet uh, situation. And this is the Internet of Things. Why is this so important? Because also field instruments and actuators will become things in the sense of Internet of Things. Maybe not today, not tomorrow, but uh, in the next couple of years we will see a lot of, of uh, new uh, activities in this field. Um, in, uh, in Europe, and especially Germany, we talk about the Industry 4.0. Um, well, it is explained like that. It's the fourth industrial revolution, which means automation based on Internet of Things, Internet of Services, and cyber physical systems. This is an activity which um, has a lot of attention in Germany and Europe. And this is also something where Ethernet in the field um, has a big meaning. So my vision is, is clear. Internet, or um, let's say more in general terms, information technologies will directly be integrated into the devices on the shop floor, respectively, uh, on the field level of process automation. So the classical industrial communication technologies, particularly field buses, will be substituted in the long run by internet-based technologies. And <clears throat> industrial ethernet will play an important role in that game. The same is true for all kinds of wireless uh, applications, wireless technologies. They will also play an important role and fit perfectly into this uh, situation. This will bring open, transparent network architectures for seamless, horizontal and vertical integration. And I think it's important to see also this remark due to the long life cycles of the plants in process automation. This, in the long run, does not mean two years or three years. This will mean in our industries five years, 10 years, 15 years. But we have already started this process. So what does it mean for our customers? Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, we are convinced that increased efficiency, productivity, more flexibility, uh, and the possibility to react on market changes are important aspects for our customers, as well as, for example, improved energy and raw material efficiency, improved plant availability and reliability, and last but not least, improved competi competitiveness. So this is, of course, a big picture. Um, and now we have to be sure that we are not starry-eyed. Because Ethernet, um, as we know it from office or from home applications, and industrial Ethernet for process industries, they are, uh, they are not the same. They use the same basic technology, of course, but there are significant differences uh, in the requirements. For example, robustness, mechanical, environmental, electrical robustness are big differences. Network topologies like ring, uh, line, or redundant ring te um, top topologies. Also, the network dimensions. Uh, many of our plants in process industries are really widespread, and we don't talk about a couple of 10 meters or a couple of 100 meters. They can be widespread many thousand meters. So we have to take these requirements into account. Um, also, in some industries, very short reaction times is a critical thing. Uh, the panel discussed about um, uh, deterministic and fast reaction times. All this has to be taken into account when we talk about industrial Ethernet. Now, the famous question, what does Ethernet especially industrial Ethernet and ice cream have in common. Does anybody know the answer? 
No? It's very easy. Lots of different flavors. Lots of different flavors. Um, and um, so we have to sort that out for our customers and for ourselves. We cannot follow all of these different flavors. And uh, when we look at the market situation, for example, from IMS research in 2012, um, we see there are two major technologies which have already good market shares and have also good growth rates. And this is Profinet and Ethernet IP. We see also Modbus in some industries, from an, uh, more from an install base perspective, but not with a, such a big growth rate. So we as Andreas and Hauser, we focus very clear on Profinet and Ethernet IP. These are the major technologies we are already supporting and will support in future. So this is our selection of ice cream, Ethernet IP and, and Profinet. Now, um, <clears throat> when we consider this field of different industries, we um, often do it this way that we say, okay, there are manufacturing industries on the left hand, there are process industries on the right hand, and in between there are industries which we call uh, so um, hybrid industries, because they are using technologies uh, from both sides and also requirements from our customers we receive which are coming from both sides. It's clear industrial Ethernet, um, Profinet and Ethernet IP, they started in the manufacturing industries, uh, but now they are moving in the hybrid industries. And um, we have already products for these hybrid industries in the market. So um, when we have a look at the classical field bus architectures, you see we have, um, let's say, a supervisory level engineering station, operator station, uh, plant as a management station. In between, we have controllers. But the access to the field level, where we find uh, instruments from different companies, where we find actuators, um, this access always goes through controllers or gateways. And depending um, on the technology, we have as a vendor of, of instrumentation, we have access to these field devices or we don't. Now, Ethernet is changing the complete game here. And that's one of the reasons why we are a strong supporters of that. Ethernet changes the game in that sense that um, we have a switched infrastructure in the future with industrial Ethernet and the access to the field level goes to these, um, through this transparent uh, switched network. This is a, a game change, and this is very important for customers and for vendors. So what are the vendor benefits we see? It's clear it's one single network architecture from ERP to the field. But of course, there will be um, structured networks with firewalls and stuff like that to ensure the IT security or cyber security. But for the customer, this means higher bandwidth with more services running in parallel, more flexibility with a modular infrastructure, fewer networks and hardware to engineer, to configure, to commission, and to maintain, and easier integration. So these are clear benefits. And uh, when I listened to the discussion on the, on the panel, a um, couple of these arguments were already um, there. Now, when we start now with the uh, hybrid industries, this is not the end of the story, of course. Uh, this story will continue also in the process industries. So what does it mean? Um, we have already so-called four-wire devices with twisted pair Ethernet in the market. This is already reality. Um, but there are two spots on the left and on the right hand um, which are also becoming important. On the left hand, we see the technology of power over Ethernet, which is an IEEE standard, 
we can also use for our so-called two-wire devices. These are devices which are power optimized and can live out of a very small amount of, of energy. We have um, investigated that and found out that the specification of power over Ethernet is sufficient to power a lot of our instruments. But this is not enough. And why? Um, because on the right hand, there is something missing. And this is exactly the field where we need an intrinsic safe version of Ethernet. Because many of the industries, it's mainly chemical, also um, oil and gas industries, they have requirements to have explosion proof. This is in the very, very beginning. And uh, I just can mention that we have to work on that to cover the complete field uh, for Ethernet in process automation uh, to make that complete in the future. When we go a little bit more inside this field, we see that there are clear requirements specified. Uh, maybe you have heard about the NAMUR, which is a German organization of the chemical and pharmaceutical industries. They have um, formulated a couple of years ago requirements uh, in a specification which they call NE74, which describe in detail what they expect in this field uh, of intrinsic safe Ethernet. Uh, I just want to mention a couple of important requirements, not to go too much in the details. First of all, uh, this is um, an application that needs uh, technology to operate our instruments, our devices, in an explosive atmosphere. This is a basic requirement because nobody likes to have an explosion in a, in a chemical or in an oil and gas plant. Another important point is, you see it here, uh, is a topology. They have widespread plants and they are asking for cable length about 1,000 meters with spurs um, up to 20 meters. This is not easy to fulfill, and uh, there, there needs to be uh, intensive uh, work on that. And last but not least, in the last <coughs> line, they are asking for so-called two-wire cables with data and power uh, for, the, for, the, for the instruments. And the reason is very simple to understand. When you just have two wires which carry data and power, there's not so big chance to make mistakes when you do the installation. And of course, the two wires have to be uh, secure. You can connect them in, in two ways. These are very, very important requirements coming out of these industries. And we have to work on that to fill the gap. So now my conclusions. The internet technologies move into the field and automation is becoming one application of uh, Internet of, the, of Things. Uh, industry 4.0 builds on industry, uh, Internet of Things and customers will gain efficiency and productivity through these technologies. Industrial Ethernet will be a core network in these new architectures and substitute in the long run uh, the classical field buses. There are, of course, preconditions to be fulfilled. Um, and one of the most important ones, for sure, is IT or, or cybersecurity. We have to solve this. Otherwise, there will be no acceptance to bring Ethernet really to the field of process, instrument, uh, process automation. Again, important steps toward the new paradigm of industrial production are already done. But there are still important big gaps to be closed, and we have started to work on that. Now, before I close my, my presentation, uh, just one of the, one, the last slide, um, referring to the two technologies I mentioned already. I see Profibus International, PI, uh, has some tradition to deal with process uh, automation requirements uh, based on Profibus PA and Profibus DP. And uh, we should not forget the name Profibus originally comes from process field bus. So it's a, it's a tradition to have an eye on these applications. 
Therefore, such requirements have already been discussed um, since a long period of time in the PI organization, and there are a lot of work uh, invested in, in that. But um, the latest news, ODVA has started um, a so-called process initiative, and this initiative has been announced, um, I think, beginning of this week by a press conference, and uh, it's called the Optimization of Process Integration. So also the ODVA is now focusing on, on these aspects, and I think it's good for our customers to see that in both important Ethernet uh, technologies, both are going to support requirements of process automation. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and if you have questions, I'm ready to discuss with you. Thank you. Thank you.